What's up guys, it's your boy Kelly Bring us a brand new video and let's see by the title of the video, I'll be showing you guys exactly how to make 3D text for your latest montage slash edit. Now this video is a revamped version of my original tutorial back I did a couple years back. So let's not waste any time, let's go straight into it. Alright guys, so let's not waste any time. What I do want to mention right off the bat, you guys will need a couple plugins for you guys to follow this tutorial completely. The first one will be Element 3D. You want Element 3D to follow this tutorial completely. Element 3D, it is a video copilot uh, software or plugin that you can buy either through the video copilot website or you can get it for free somewhere online, pirated obviously as well. For the purpose of this video, I won't show you guys how to download or install Element 3D. If you don't know, just look up on YouTube. You'll find a tutorial out there somewhere, I'm sure. So what you guys want to do is go ahead and open up your After Effects, which I have my After Effects here open. Um, let's click on file, import, file. Now you guys do want to have a cinematic already well made or recorded cinematic. Um, pretty much uh, I have a cinematic that I want to use already that I am already well aware of. Um, so go ahead and have your cinematic. Go ahead and record your cinematic. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag this bad boy over to our composition here. And I'm going to trim up the cinematic because right now this cinematic is way too long. So I want the cinematic to start right around here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this real quick. I'm going to trim this up. So work area, I'm going to hold shift, brings it there. And then I want the cinematic to end right there. That's fine. So I'm going to trim this here. Right click, trim come to work area. So now our cinematic, if we watch it, it starts. I want my 3D text to be here as well too. And that's pretty much about it. So usually for 3D text, you want to make it as for your intro sequence. A lot of people do that typically, or you can make it pretty cool and include it somewhere in between your montage or your gaming edit. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and click our text layer to here. And we're just going to type in Cuddy for short. Perfect. Now I don't like this font that we're using. So we're going to go ahead and go to our fonts and type in code. I definitely want to use this font specifically just for the fun of it. It's a cool font. I like how it looks. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it there. So let's go ahead. What we're going to do at this point, we're just going to go ahead and import element 3D. So then we can go ahead and make this 3D text and this 2D text into 3D text. So let's click on layer new solid and we can name this element. Now let's go to our effects and presets tab. Obviously it's going to have to load. So go ahead and wait for this to load. If you just open up after effects, just like I did. Okay, awesome. So now we have our element, our FX presets pulled up. Let's go ahead and type in element for short. You'll see it pop up here for Video Copilot if you installed it correctly, obviously. And let's go ahead and drag that over to our black element solid layer here. Now that we have that set up already, let's go ahead and go to custom layers. We're going to pretty much let element know that we want to use this text as our 3D uh, extruded text. And then we're going to go ahead and set our texture map to the background of this video so that it reflects to the background of this map. So let's go to custom texture maps layer, put it to Fortnite, which is your cinematic, and then go to custom text and mask path layer one, cutty or whatever you end up typing for the, for the type tool. Let's go click out of that and just click on scene setup. Awesome. So now we are within element 3d. Um, let's go ahead and this is our 3d space right here, as you can see, and we're going to go ahead and create our text here by clicking on extrude. And as you can see, we have our 3D text and 3D space already, which is really cool. Obviously, the text looks very simple and bland, but we're going to go ahead and mess with it and add a couple cool effects to make this look really good. I forgot to mention this. You guys definitely want pro shaders as well, too. How to install pro shaders? Just look up pro shaders pack element, element 3D for free online or find a way of getting it um, and go ahead and install it to your pro shaders on element 3D as well. If you can, if not, it's no worries. You guys are good. Um, just kind of do the same thing with what I'm kind of doing with different materials. So let's go to pro shaders and we're going to go ahead and use maybe a, some sort of plastic, uh, maybe plastic run range red. I'm going to double click that. So as you can see, it created a pretty cool red kind of vibe to it. Now I want the color to be different because the background is a little bit more orangey than red. So let's see here. So we got a couple things here reflectivity we definitely want the reflectivity to be up color maybe like an orangey kind of vibe because we definitely want that to be the kind of vibe for it a little bit like that that's i think that's fine and so now what i want you guys to do so it reflects off to the background of, of the map click on environment click on this drop down and click on your cinematic and then click okay and as you can see it reflects to the background of your cinematic instead now maybe the intensity we can bring it up a little bit more and maybe make this a brighter color. 
more of an orangey, like right there is fine, a yellowy, and click OK. Cool. So now you can see our 3D text is within the cinematic itself. At this point now, we're going to go ahead and hide both of these two layers, and we're going to go ahead and motion track this. The way we do that is right click on the cinematic itself, go to track and stabilize, and click on track camera. And what this is going to do is, this may take a while depending on how good your computer is. What it's going to do is going to render track points for the cinematic so then we can go ahead and tell the 3D text to maintain in one spot within that cinematic, if that makes any sense. So let this go ahead and load this up real quick. We'll be right back when it this loads up. So now it's done. Let's go straight into what we're going to do next. Now these track points are really big as you can see for this specific cinematic. I'm going to go to track point size. I'm going to burn this down just a little bit just because it's a little too big. So I can kind of see where this is rendering at. Uh, you can click on the strike mark here in case you click out of it so it renders the track points. Now I kind of want this the, the 3D text to be floating like right around here. Okay, so I'm going to just highlight all of this. Right click, create null and camera. And so now we created a null. Now if I get rid of these render track points, you can see there's a null being created right here. This is it right there. And what a null is, is we're just letting the camera know this is where we kind of want the 3D text to be at, okay? We let, we're letting the software know where, where we want it to kind of place it at. So we're going to create a couple more track points so then we, it knows kind of where we want it to be. So we can create one here, create null, so it doesn't glitch out too much. Uh, we can create one here, create null, maybe one right there as well too. So we created a couple track nulls. This was the first one obviously right here. That's kind of where we want our 3D text to be at. So now what we're going to do is go enable our element layer. And see the 3D text is there. We're going to go to group one and go to particle replicator. What you guys want to do next is go ahead and click on track null one, which is the very first one that we created. Click P on the keyboard. And we want to copy these values from the position on this null over to the element right here. So then it kind of places it in that area naturally. So it's kind of there already naturally, which is pretty cool, but we want it to be exact. So at this point, copy and paste. So the first one goes there. So now that now that we did that, at this point, we're going to just see if it renders it out pretty well. Um, so I definitely want this to be a little more up. So I'm going to bring this up just like right there. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mess with this uh, 3D text and make it look a lot better. So this looks good. Control S to save just in case. I'm going to save this as 3D text tutorial so that you guys can download the project file and see it for yourselves. We're going to go ahead and kind of make this look a lot better. So first and foremost, let's go back to scene setup. I'm going to make this 3D text a lot more bulky than what it looks like. Because right now, it's pretty bulky, but I want it to be a lot more bulkier. So go to your extrusion model. Click on this itself. Extrude. Bring it up just a little bit. As you can see, made it a lot more thicker, which is nice. Click OK. Now at this point, let's go ahead and kind of give it some more of a rotation. So go to particle rotation, maybe, um, ooh, that looks pretty nice. That looks so cool with the shadows. You see how the lighting works already by itself. So maybe we, we can, we can increase the X rotation, the Y rotation, just a tad bit and just kind of give it more of a shadowy kind of vibe like that. That's pretty cool. Perfect. Now that we've done this a little bit, a little bit of a rotation, we can go ahead and make this look a lot better. And the, the way we're going to do that is go ahead and adding some ambient inclusion. And what ambient inclusion is, is to give it some more shadows to the actual uh, 3D text. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go to render settings right here in the bottom left. Go to ambient inclusion, inclusion, click, click enable AO. Um, typically for me, I like to use ray traced because it just looks a lot better. So for example, if I kind of zoom in here, get closer. I'm going to go ahead and disable all these nulls so they're not in the way anymore as much. I'm going to click on SAO and click on S. Instead of ray instead of SSAO, we're going to click on ray traced. And you can see right off the bat, it added some shadows in between the letters. You can see that right here. It looks pretty good already. So intensity, you can mess with that and see if you like to increase the intensity or just bring it all the way down. I'm going to keep it at maybe like one is solid because there's a lot of shadows here. This is a really dark scene. Uh, multi sampling, I usually put it at eight, gives it more of a cl you know cleaner, cleaner kind of look. Forgive me because my computer just crashed. Trying to show you guys what to do next now. So go to element and go to effects and controls, 
and go ahead and go to ambient inclusion and I was messing I believe with the RTX spread so mess with the spread it gives it more of a darker kind of shadow as you can see here I mess with it it looks a lot better that way uh, that's what's really nice about that anyways so now that we have that it looks pretty good it looks pretty solid I like the shadows it's not too bad um, at this point to make this look a little bit more better is go to output over here on the bottom left um, now you can see here show composite we want that uh, multi sampling keep it at eight that's solid uh, super multi sampling you could definitely put that at four if you like if your computer can handle it um, obviously my computer is able to keep up at the moment uh, you can check mark enhanced multi sampling as well too um, and that's pretty much it at that point there so now if we kind of zoom in with the text the text looks really good. It looks like it's part of the, cin uh, the cinematic, the scene. The colors match the background. The shadows look good with the lights. The light is hitting off from up here. So the reflection looks great. Everything looks good. So you can mess with all these settings here personally. I won't do it for the, for the sake of the tutorial. I'll probably mess with the Y rotation just a tad bit more instead. Uh, maybe like this would be pretty cool. Uh, maybe bring up the X values up a little bit like that. That looks pretty cool there. I like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I wouldn't spend too much on this. I mean, this looks pretty good and solid there. You could add some lights to make to enhance this 3D text. Um, the way you would do that is click on layer, new, light. I usually use a point light, and I kind of go based off what the kind of the color that it's emitting from the lamp earlier. So I'll probably like bring up like a little bit orangey. Click OK, and then you can bring this up all the way up. And keep bringing it up so it gives it more of a shadow kind of vibe and feel as you can see so even just adding that little bit of light gives it more of a cool contrast with light it actually kind of works pretty well as well too well that's pretty much it man that's all you could really do when it comes to 3d text um, i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys did leave a like comment down below what you want to see next this is a very simple video on how to do 3d text in general obviously there's so much more you could do uh you can do your own texture maps you can use different types of things to make this look a lot better add rays you can add glow you can add blur it can you can make this a lot better but if you're trying to go for a simplistic realistic look this is as good as it gets when it comes to just keeping it simple anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like comment down below what you want to see next and as always i'll see you guys later on the next video peace out